Hello, everyone, and welcome in to CrushTheStreet.com. I'm Kenneth Amaduri. We've got a great interview today. Uh, I know it's been some time since our, our last one, so I apologize for that. I've been up in the Canada at the Sprott Conference looking at uh, different investments and speaking to some of the most amazing CEOs there are in uh, the precious metal sector. Uh, but today, we're going to be having a digital currency discussion uh, I have on the line Tao of Satoshi. He's with Cash Alternative TV. He's the host of that. And also Dash Nation founder, uh, Tao of Satoshi. Thanks for coming on the line with me today. Well, it's great to be here. Thanks for uh, having me on. It's interesting that you mentioned that you were in Canada because that's where I hail from. So where I'm talking to you from right now. So I'm uh, happy you came to visit my homeland. I hope you enjoyed yourself. <laughs> it's perfect place to visit in July. It was absolutely beautiful. One of my first times, um, or my first time in Vancouver and uh, up and around uh, Vancouver uh, West. And it just was a, a great place to be. We went up to Whistler. I uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, but let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about Tao of Satoshi. Can you uh, explain to the audience a little bit what that means and how you, how you got that name? Okay, well, that's kind of an interesting story because uh, I'm a fan of the Toronto Blue Jays. And uh, the Toronto Blue Jays have a commentator that uh, does, uh, he does like news articles and stuff. His name is Tao of Steve. And uh, Dave Steve was uh, a really a uh, star pitcher for the Blue Jays back in the 80s and 90s. Uh, he's, one of, he's the first one to throw a no-hitter for the Blue Jays. So if, you, if anyone's familiar with baseball, that's, uh, that's who he was. He was a dominant pitcher. So this guy was a big fan of his and he called himself Tao of Steve. So I became a fan of Bitcoin, and, uh, and Satoshi Nakamoto is obviously the founder of Bitcoin. And so I said, well, wouldn't it be neat if I called myself Tao of Satoshi, which means the way of Satoshi? And uh, I know it might not be a popular opinion on some channels, but I feel that uh, the currency that I represent, Dash, is the way of Satoshi. So that's why I am calling myself Tao of Satoshi. That's where it well stuck. I, I would like to get your thoughts on Bitcoin. Lots of developing news here with the fork in the Bitcoin ecosystem. And it seems to have released a, a, a big weight that has been on the, the Bitcoin shoulders. Now we have Bitcoin Cash and, and Bitcoin. So just some initial thoughts on what we're seeing right now and, uh, you know, your, your general comments on it. Okay, well, I'm coming from it. Admittedly, I'm not an expertise on uh, Bitcoin right now because I'm fully involved with Dash. But from my perspective, uh, on the Dash Nation Slack, we talk a lot about it on the altcoin channel. And uh, that's it's, it's kind of good in a way, but bad in another way. So you can look at it in a good way that uh, people that want the bigger blocks uh, will, will fork into Bitcoin Cash. And the people that want the smaller blocks and the block stream uh, vision will stay with the Bitcoin, the, the original Bitcoin. But you can also look at it in a bad way that now there's two competing Bitcoins that has the opportunity to perhaps confuse people that might say, OK, well, which one is actually Bitcoin and which one should I use? You know, the average person. And uh, that, that kind of person might uh, find it confusing. So it's good and it's bad, it's, you know, it's like anything else. You know, Bitcoin Cash has been around for, what, a minute? And it's commanding a $16 billion market cap. Is there merit to this, in, in your opinion? Oh, well, I think that a lot of it is due to uh, speculation on the markets. Uh, people saying, well, uh, maybe some big players uh, that are big blockers are going to move into Bitcoin Cash. So they want to get their hands on it before uh, anything uh, anybody else does. But as far as, uh, you know, whether or not it's worth that kind of money, I, could, I wouldn't be able to tell you. But I do, however, consider Bitcoin Cash to be more of the philosophy of Dash. So I, I, I'm keeping my eyes on Bitcoin Cash for sure. But I, whether or not it's worth $400 a coin at this point, I, I, I couldn't tell you. I'm not, I'm not involved in it in any way. Sure. Yeah, it, it's real interesting. You would think that having two Bitcoins, a split in Bitcoin, would be a dilution to it. But yet Bitcoin has gone up. The actual, what, we're over $3,400 for a Bitcoin. We're hitting all-time highs, yet... There's a dilution in the market. And is there any explanation for this? Or was it a relief to the community that some, some aspects of the scaling debate was solved? 
Yes, I believe that's what it was. And I think that if the, if Bitcoin was uh, together with their governance and they didn't have this massive two year long debate over scaling, uh, it, it would have probably reached that valuation on its own. But now that uh, the camps have been split up and the people that want to go one way are going one way and the people that are going the other way are going that way, I think it was a relief in the short term. I don't know how the price is going to fare long term, but uh, in the short term, there's a lot of uh, jubilation about, uh, okay, we can go our own, do, do our own thing. We don't have to worry about the other camp. So I think there's a lot of that involved right now. So I think we'll need some time to actually get a true valuation of the two currencies. Tao, uh, it would certainly seem like the top altcoins have benefited from Bitcoin struggle, uh, one of which being Dash. Uh, and so let's talk about that a little bit. Would you have expected Dash to do as well as it's done without Bitcoin going through this scaling debate? Well, uh, obviously, I'm the hometown guy. I, I believe in Dash quite strongly. So I believe that Dash would uh, do well no matter what happened with Bitcoin, because the, in, its own, uh, in its own way, in its own project, Dash has hit all the buttons that it needs to tick to make sure that it, it's going to be successful in the long term. So it, it does get influence, of course. Bitcoin is like the biggest, the, the king on the block, right? The, it's it's going to influence everything. But I think over time, in a long enough spectrum, you're going to see Dash uh, do well as it is. So it, where, it, where it does get influenced by Bitcoin, it's not the be-all and end-all in the Dash ecosystem right now. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what's going on in Dash and what do people have to look forward to? Well, right now, at this point, uh, Dash has, uh, for usability standpoint, Dash has uh, instant transactions, which means that uh, I can send you money and you can be secure in the knowledge that your money is yours instantaneously. Whereas in uh, Bitcoin, you might have to wait for a few confirmations before you can be secure of that. And uh, also Dash offers privacy and it's, uh, it offers you, like with Bitcoin, you have, it's pseudo anonymous, it's kind of anonymous, so it's good that way. But there are ways that you can track uh, transactions. And uh, to this day, there has been no transactions that have been tracked in Dash. So that offers that. Uh, it's, it, off it will offer usability with Evolution, and that's going to be coming up soon within the next few months. And that's going to make a, a UI interface similar to PayPal. And I think that's a big obstacle that uh, cryptocurrency has to uh, overcome is the fact that uh, people can't use it. Like uh, my grandmother couldn't use crypto, it's too hard. But when you make it easy to use with a PayPal interface and something people understand, uh, it's bound to attract market share to that. So, and also, and behind the scenes, we have governance and we have um, uh, funding through our masternode system. Our block reward goes 45% to the masternodes. Uh, Forty-five percent to the miners and ten percent to our governance. So every block that comes, we put more and more money towards our governance and towards our funding to do things that we need to to do to succeed. So all these things are happening. Dash is ticking every button that you need to tick to become a successful cryptocurrency. Sure. Uh, so when it comes to Dash being so anonymous, and that's a great usability feature for people who want to diversify out of the the monetary system, but how will governments react to Dash if it becomes a, a real legitimate player in global economics? That's a good question. Uh, we have uh, used some of our budget funds to uh, pursue uh, legal uh, opinions about this, and uh, I'm not privy to all the uh, legal opinions, but that what's been coming out of the core team is uh, pretty favorable towards the people that are running masternodes. Uh, we will be responsible for the private transactions that go through our masternodes because we don't actually track it. We're just providing an avenue for it. And but as we go, we're gonna do. We're gonna see more and more of our budget go towards uh, the legal aspects of it, not just in the United States, but like everywhere around the world. And uh, we should be okay. As of this point, all the news is good. So I, I want to talk to you a, a little bit about the future of blockchain. If uh, you wouldn't mind just what do you see as the potentials for uses in the blockchain because this is really something that's a whole new frontier for uh, the world and, and just uh, opening up a whole new avenue of technological ideas that have yet to be explored or are even conceivable what more than 10 years ago so uh, any thoughts as to where we could go 
uh, with the understanding that we have right now in 2017 of the blockchain? Yeah, like I, we concentrate a lot on the currency aspect, and I believe that it's important to have a currency aspect to uh, have the incentives that you need to run such a system because the, the miners aren't going to do this for free. Uh, the nodes aren't going to do this for free. They, you, need, you need incentives. So anything basically that needs a ledger, you know, such as like voting, for example, like that, that would be good to, to vote through a blockchain. It would be good to uh, keep healthcare records through a blockchain. Like basically anything that needs a ledger that you need to keep track of uh, would be revolutionized by a decentralized ledger. So I, I, I'm really looking forward to the use cases that we come up with. And a lot of the altcoins that we see now are actually going in their own fields and uh, they're trying to find out more use cases for blockchain. And that's why we have so many. You know, we have some that will only aspire to be currencies, but there's also some that just have their own use cases. And I really can't wait to see how it uh, develops. So is it possible for a private company with real revenues, real earnings to fund its own blockchain ledger? and for the blockchain to be separate of its token or, or something that's people speculate in? I'm not sure about that. I, I, all I know is like with, with Dash, we're a decentralized autonomous organization. And the way we do with our blockchain is we, we get the money from there. And as we develop, we're, we're gonna get more and more from fees because the block reward is gonna go down slowly and the fees should go up. And when the fees go up, that kind of offsets the uh, block reward. So that's a sustainable uh, income for the foreseeable future. Uh, with a centralized company, I'm not sure if they could do it. I, I could suppose they could if they had enough funds to start it up. Uh, but then they need to have incentives for the miners and uh, they need to have incentives for the nodes and everything else. But uh, yeah, it would be an interesting scenario to, to see. But with Dash, we're a decentralized currency and we can do it. So yeah, maybe. Right, right. I'm just wondering how the this blockchain technology will get away from monetary uh, uses if if that's possible or is it always going to have to be associated with some sort of monetary reward that's tied to an incentive to the miner i guess there, there always needs to be that but will it always be something that someone will have to speculate in to to use up or down someone's you know taking a risk owning the the, the coin or the token or uh, whatever you want to call it. So uh, I'm just trying to wrap my mind around what the, the future of this whole new frontier is going to look like. And I, I know it's going to be really, really exciting. And um, it's just so many aspects to, to explore here. So, okay, so all coins going through this huge ICO craze right now. And uh, companies are raising millions of dollars in seconds with these altcoins. Is it possible for, um, you know, these companies? Or do you do you see the a lot of these companies getting in trouble for essentially going around the rules of the financial sector, uh, raising funds for their company that are largely disconnected with this ICO? Yeah, I, I don't know. There's probably some reputable ones out there, but uh, there definitely is some ones that will end up taking advantage of the system. And with the eagerness of the investors right now to be a part of that ICO craze, there's bound to be a lot of people that get hurt. And I believe that there will be probably legal action in the future. But the problem is, is with the decentralized currencies such as this, uh, who do you sue? Like, uh, who, who do you approach? Uh, who owns it? You know, like, it's, uh, there's a whole uh, other uh, pile of uh, <laughs> uh, can of worms to open up there because uh, I think that it's going to be uh, it's going to be messy. People are going to lose money and people are going to try and want to get it back. And people want the wild, wild west and people want the free market economy. But when people lose money, now all of a sudden they want a central authority to regulate it. So how do you how do you combine the old school with the new school? So I, I'm just like you, man. I don't I don't know what's going to happen there, but I, I all I know is I didn't invest in any ICOs because uh, to me it looked like dangerous territory. Well, look what happened with BTC Dash E getting shut down by the government and everyone that lost money there. It's it's the wild west, but people who lost are are now hurting and you know, wishing that they didn't lose that money, right? Absolutely. You know, I I guess I, I for me the opportunity in the digital currency space really is just very early. We're looking at a hundred billion dollar total market cap. We're over that at the moment. 
I know uh, the, the money, you know, the, it's expanded above that. But really, we're still very early in this. And institutional money has really yet to be involved with cryptocurrency to a large degree. And it's my belief that if we see this happen to even the smallest degree, we would have to see that market cap really climb, go to 500 billion and, and even into the trillion dollar range. Uh, so it, in your, in, in the research that you have and seen, are you seeing this start to happen where institutional money is trying to get exposure to cryptocurrencies? I don't have any direct uh, access to this kind of information, but I have heard that through the grapevine that there are uh, institutional investments that uh, want to happen. Well, the ETF uh, with Bitcoin, uh, they tried to do it, but the S SEC shot them down. But uh, I'm sure there are other ones waiting in the wings. Uh, you don't see this kind of uh, increase in value over a five year period and not expect to have people want to be a part of it because these uh, the use cases, like we said, are, are astronomical and uh, the, the, the amount of money out there to be made is astronomical. So we can't expect the average investor not to want to be a part of it. Uh, I expect that we're going to see a lot more of that in the future. And uh, with the additional money that uh, we make in the Dash ecosystem, we can use that to power our, uh, our, our progress. So that's good with, uh, with Dash. That's why we, we figured that out earlier on in the system. We figured as you know, if, if our market cap increases, we can do more for the network, which will increase our market cap, which we can do more for the network. It's like a self-fulfilling, uh, uh, so, like self, I don't know how you say it, but it, it makes it bigger and bigger. Yes, yeah, like it's a snowball. It is rolling down the hill. So you, you can see that it's getting bigger and bigger as it goes on. So that's, that's why we're taking advantage of that new institutional money that's coming in, if any of it happens to go to Dash. Sure. Right. In two, 2011, 2012, people saw the cryptocurrencies as monopoly money, maybe, maybe even longer than that. But in 2017, I really feel like it was solidified in the, the mind of of the future of the, the mainstream not a lot of people are involved with it but it now we we're in a spot where it's it's not going away this is part of the future and in 2018 maybe it'll become an asset class because right now institutional money is not in it people aren't largely investing in the cryptocurrency space maybe people uh businesses and, and individuals are but major, the big money has yet to do it. And, and I really feel like 2018 will be the year where the cryptocurrencies become an actual asset class in the mainstream. And I just want to get your final thoughts on that. And uh, before we wrap up here. Okay, yeah, I, I can see your point. I do think that uh, I, you can see uh, from people that have been here from the beginning, you can see the ups and downs of the markets and everything and how more people, and like when I go out to the to the to my work and I talk about Dash, people are like, "Oh, let's uh, let's uh, join in this." You know, they they're really more open to talk about it. Than, whereas back in the future, they're saying, "Oh, this is just like you said, monopoly money, play money." But it's becoming more serious. Uh, people can see the use cases for it, and they can see the, that it's been going up and up. And obviously, there's a reason for that. Like uh, what uh, Bitcoin went up to 1200 and then got back down to 200 and then it's been going back up, you know, like this is not tulip mania. This is actually like a legitimate thing. So I do believe you that uh, that it's going to happen in 2018 at that uh, point and it will just become an asset class, like you said. So I really look forward to the future of Dash uh, using some of that money to uh, for it to fund our infrastructure. All right. Well, Tao of Satoshi, if people want to learn more about what you're doing, and uh, the work that you do, uh, please let them know a little bit about what they'll find uh, if they visit your sites. Okay, well, first of all, you can visit my channel on YouTube. It's called uh, Cash Alternative TV. And uh, there you'll see some uh, episodes of me talking about Dash. I do interviews of people that are doing uh, proposals for the Dash network. So with the Dash network, uh, you can actually submit proposals if there's anybody out there who has an expertise. Uh, it costs five Dash to submit a proposal and you can actually do work and get paid by the Dash network uh, for your services. And uh, that's, uh, that's definitely a good thing. So I do, uh, I do interviews with these guys. And if you want to find me on Twitter, uh, my, my handle on Twitter is at Cash Alternative. And I recommend if you're interested in Dash to join uh, Dash Nation Slack. 
It's uh, where the community hangs out and uh, you can find a wealth of information there. We have uh, lots of different channels for different aspects of Dash that you might be interested in. And I will provide you with that link so you can put it in the, descri in the description. Uh, so that would be good. And uh, I hope uh, I, I have, I've explained a little bit about Dash and I hope you enjoyed uh, me being on the show. Sure, absolutely. It was an honor to have you come on and I appreciate your expertise in uh, on these topics, uh, huge times. Well, I, I believe we're gonna be talking about 2017 in, in the cryptocurrency space for decades to come. We're gonna look back on this time as as a really pivotal time in, uh, uh, in the history of money. So uh, really exciting times. So thanks for coming on the show with me. It was a pleasure.